Welcome to um, this class. Thank you for um, the team at Chef Speed and of course um, our sponsors, Field Rose, for this opportunity to do this class. I'm like really, really grateful. This is, I love doing live streams. I don't know if you guys seen any of my live streams that I've done on Instagram, but this is always a fun time. So I'm really glad to be here and I'm really grateful for uh, Chef Speed and Field Rose for making this all happen. I do also want to give a quick shout to IRC, the Re Independent Restaurant Coalition, because um, obviously we want to help support all independent restaurants and that's the whole point of this. Um, Field Rose, uh, thank you again for donating a real generous amount of $250,000 um, to chefs and independent restaurants um, and hopefully we can make some good usage of those funds. So um, if you guys want to make a donation, uh, there should be a donation link in the in the box below, not really, in the description. You'll be able to find that. Um, any donations will help. Obviously, um, restaurants are in dire need of, of any help and support as possible. So. Um, even like dining out or taking out or um, help supporting your local restaurant. That's really, really helpful um, at these trying times. So anyway, how, who, who are, are you? I? you? Oh, uh, of course, who am I? I'm uh, Chef Esther Choi. I am the chef and owner of Mock Bar in New York City. I have uh, three restaurants in New York City, two Mock Bars, um, one inside Chelsea Market and one in Brooklyn right uh, across from the Barclay Center. Um, and then I have a cocktail bar in the Lower East Side called Miss You. So those are my three restaurants. We were supposed to actually open our fourth restaurant this year, early this year in Midtown. And that was supposed to be our third location of Mock Bar. But obviously because of what happened with COVID-19, we had to push that back. And now I don't know what's really going on with that because everything changes every week, as you guys know. Um, but I am making a corn dog, but it's not just any corn dog. Um, there are a few fun twists to this corn dog. Um, in Korea, um, there's been this very trending item. It's, it's like a French fry hot dog. Um, but it's not only French fry hot dogs. They do like, they make like corn dogs with all of these weird kind of like coatings that you wouldn't really imagine. Like French fry is just one of them. I think there's one with like, like they make it from like squid ink, right? Mm -hmm. What else is there? There's like mm -hmm. so all these different ones. Mm -hmm. We've had it in LA before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyway, so the one that I'm making is the French fry corn dog because I believe it was like 13, 14 years ago when I was studying abroad in Korea, there was one thing that I would always crave um, around like two in the morning maybe after a long night of drinking, or maybe um, after a long night of studying. Um, but it would it would always be this um, french fry covered corn dog, and they sell it on the streets of Korea. And before it kind of blew up recently, it was already trending like 12, 13 years ago. So and it's like a street food. It is a street food, yeah. Definitely a street food. It's something that you can find pretty much all over the streets of Korea especially when you go like night shopping. There's this concept in Korea called like night shopping. And it's it's basically all of these stores that open after midnight. And you basically go shopping from like midnight to 5 a.m., right? That's mm -hmm. so much fun. That was fun. Yeah, so um, I always have this memory of like eating this corn dog or this hot dog covered corn dog um, at the night market. So. I love this item. It's like super, super fun to make, and I feel like I feel like it's a crowd pleaser. And also, um, we're using the Field Rose Frankfurters, which gives it another dimension. It's like really awesome. It complements the um, French fries and the dough really well. Um, it is amazing. So we're gonna have to get started because we want the. I can keep talking in a little bit, but I do want to do this one step. Uh, because it takes about 10 minutes for the yeast to bloom. Also, my oil is on. It's getting hot right now because we're going to be frying. I'm going to just lower it. All right. So let's get started. Unless you guys have any questions. Anyone? No? Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Ready to do this? 
All right, so let's come over here. And, okay, so the first step, maybe we should go over the ingredients first. So um, the first step to this uh, corn dog is to make the dough. And I'm using um, this dough that I really love. It's, it's, um, it's a dough that I actually uh, developed at my restaurants uh, for my hoe cake. So hoe cake is one of our um, like pork, fried pork buns um, that's made with this dough. This dough is like a yeasty dough made with like uh, flour. It's pretty basic flour, instant dried yeast. Um, there's some uh, milk in there. Uh, so it's a twist on that. We're, adding matcha powder to this one because it's fun but you totally don't need to use matcha, matcha powder. powder like green tea powder yeah green tea powder matcha you do not have to add this if you don't want to i just thought it would be like a fun addition um so the first thing is some warm water we have to bloom our yeast so i have some warm water here i believe you guys have the recipe so um apologies if i don't say the amounts i don't really remember because i already <laughs> meased everything out beforehand so okay my um, warm water and then i have the instant dried yeast i believe this is about a, a tablespoon um but basically we're just blooming the yeast and when you're using warm water you just got to make sure that it's not too hot but it's not cold either because if it's too hot it's going to kill the yeast if it's too cold then it's going to take forever to bloom so it has to be like the right temperature and you can just kind of feel it and make sure that it's like warm to touch and that should be good so i have yeast Warm water, sugar, and we're just gonna whisk that. And just make sure that everything is really well incorporated and the sugar and the yeast melts, right? Give that a whisk. And this needs to bloom for about 10 minutes, so. I'm just gonna set that aside. Now, you don't have to let it bloom for 10 minutes. You can technically just add it to the flour, but I always like to let it bloom because it kind of gives it that jump start um, before adding it to the dry ingredients. Okay, so that's done. And then we are gonna sift the flour, salt, and matcha powder together just so we ensure that there's no lumps. But, um, show you over here so we're going to sift this together this is about three cups of flour can't believe i remember that by heart <laughs> but there's the flour i'm just going to do it in batches so i don't make a mess how's everyone doing it are do i have no questions like i like interaction i like interaction guys so you guys can ask me anything seriously at this point I like getting a good dialogue going. I guess no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so flour. Let's get the rest of this in here. What does that do with like straining that, the oh, flour? Sifting the flour? Yeah, what does that do? So it, it just makes sure there's no lumps in the flour and it just makes the flour fluffier. And mm -hmm. obviously it's not like a totally necessary step and you don't actually have to use a stand mixer either you can mm -hmm. just do this by hand but i always like to ensure that there's no lumps so no lumps no lumps yeah and it's just like an extra step that you take to ensure um like a perfect result That's would you can you put anything else but matcha powder in there you don't need to put any but would you would you recommend anything else not really. If you don't want to put matcha in, you don't have to. But you can you can put other stuff in if you other powders. But not really though. No, <laughs> just the matcha or I not? Mean, or I don't know. I'm just I can't think of anything right now on top of my head. But uh -huh. yes, if you want to use like garlic powder and go like more savory, you can mm. totally do that. If you want to go like more um, sugary, sugary, you can add sugar to mm -hmm. it. If you want the, your dough to be like sweeter, mm -hmm. um, but I am not because we sprinkle sugar at the end on okay. top of the hot dog, and that's like a very Korean street food thing mm -hmm. to do. And I wanted to keep it like that, so I'm keeping the dough pretty savory. Got it. Um, but there is a tiny bit of sugar that went into the yeast, um, so there is a little bit of sweetness. With everything, there always needs to be that balance—a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. Okay, so 
Speaking of salt, I'm adding salt to this as well. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and put it where did this again, sir? And then at this point, honestly, um, the yeast has not, I mean, it hasn't been 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but I think I'm just gonna add it anyway right now. But you can start seeing like how it foams up a little bit. I mean, when you really wait like 10 minutes, it, it could kind of like go crazy, start bubbling and stuff, but um, it will still work if you just want to add it now, which okay. is what we're going to do because I don't want to just stand here and you guys aren't asking any questions. So. Well, there is a question. Okay. So what, what made you want to choose the matcha powder then? Do you like the matcha flavors or? Yes. You like I, the flavor. I like the flavor of matcha and I like adding it because of the color. Like it's green, it's fun. And um, when I do make like a sweet dough with, mm -hmm. with this recipe, I do a lot of like sweet things uh, with it. I like adding the matcha because um, it's actually, you can get a hint of that. I like that bitterness. I think it's a fun thing to use. Because one viewer said the matcha flavor is too strong for them. It could be too strong for them. Um. Well, this recipe only has like not even a tablespoon mm -hmm. so it won't be you'll just get a hint of it. Got it but i do understand when you think that matcha is too strong because i feel like a lot of people say this but it depends because if it's like a matcha dessert then they're going to add a ton of matcha to it and it gets bitter um but some people enjoy that bitterness. so with this it's really more of like a fun addition mm -hmm. you do not have to add it if you don't like matcha um and that's that okay, okay. Are we doing this? Yep. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the yeast mixture, yeast water mixture into it, into the mixer. And then we'll just start mixing on the low. And then you'll you'll start seeing like little, you'll start seeing it kind of come together, which I'll, I'll show you. But it's very dry still at this point. Just wanted to, you probably can't even see the color because um, it's that light. All right, so it's on low. And then I have some almond milk here. And, but you can use any type of plant-based milk or just regular milk, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But I am using almond milk for mine. I'm just gonna give it a whisk. Because almond milk can separate. So there's my almond milk, and then I'm gonna just like slowly start adding this. Don't add all of it together at once. Just wanna kind of slowly add it and make sure that everything gets incorporated nicely. And this dough is like very sticky, um, so don't be alarmed if it's like seemingly too wet. And this is something that I feel like you can make like the day before um, because it is a process only because you have to let it sit for at least an hour because you want the yeast to bloom and the um, dough to double in size. Are you using instant yeast or active dry yeast? Um, it's instant active dry yeast. So it is instant. It is instant. But yeah. But I think active dry yeast is instant yeast, so it is, uh, I'm, I am using instant. So even with instant, you still have to let it proof. So um, here it is, just show you what it looks like, but it seems a tad bit dry and this can happen if it does seem dry and you could just add a little bit more almond milk which is what I'm gonna do it's a little dry in my apartment so probably need um, a little bit more moisture which happens when I um, when I developed this recipe at my restaurants it would literally the amount of milk that I added would change all the time because, and I couldn't figure out why, and it was just because of the humidity. Mm. And it just like really depends, so. Can you use water instead of almond milk, or does it have to be? I would try to use a milk product. Um, and it doesn't have to be almond milk. You can use right. oat milk, you can use regular milk. 
whole milk, two percent, zero percent. But I would use milk. I would use some type of milk. Just because it adds nice flavor. If you just add water, that's fine, but you know, you always want to enhance flavor, right? In any way possible form. So you hear that? Now it sounds crazy. <laughs> it's probably because I didn't add it when I needed to. But it's okay. Just gonna go a little bit. And I like to knead it for about at least like at least like two to three minutes. The yeast for flavor or for the lift? Can you can you use like baking powder or? I no, I would use. It has to be yeast because you want it to proof, and that's the whole point. And you'll see, I'll show you because I have one already made. What happens with the yeast? Um, it won't achieve the same thing with baking powder or baking soda or any of the other. So you need the agents. lift. You do need that proof. Mm -hmm. When it proves that what happens to the dough, it starts stretching. And that, that's the effect you want. And also, the flavor is really good. The flavor is really nice too. You know, it gives it that real like bready flavor that we want. So, this is going. All right, let's see what it looks like. So, um, so I, I'm gonna have to use my hands and knead this a little bit more because I added the milk a little later. But you can see how the dough is like very sticky. That's how we want, want it. Yeah, we sticky. want it. It should be a relatively kind of like wet, very sticky dough. And if you feel it with your the matcha um, powder actually gives it a really pretty color too. Yeah, exactly. Is that your comment or did someone say that? That's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so this is pretty much done. I can go a little bit further, but I think for timing purposes, we're just gonna move on. Okay. But um, how you wanna proof this is, try to get a bowl or something. Um, So you could just use a bowl, but I, what you want to do is add some oil to a bowl or obviously for me, I'm using this half pan and you can just kind of like, I think this pan might be a little bit too big for the dough, but it's fine because this is not what I'm going to use right now. So you do want to oil it though, because it's going to stick and then you're going to cover this and let it bloom or like double and proof and um, that will take like an hour to do and or you could do it like the day before like I was saying if you want to make your dough like the day before you can totally do that and then um, and just after, keep it in the fridge yeah after overnight. it blooms you can kind of like knead it a few more times and then cover it and keep it in your fridge it might continue to bloom and proof but that's fine it still works. It at the, obviously, at the restaurants, when we do this at scale, we make it like in advance because mm -hmm. we can't do this to order. All right, so that's I'm gonna set aside the dough because we have it already made over here. And I actually, for this one, I did not add any of the matcha powder because um, I didn't have it at, the, at my restaurants. But I wanted to show you with one, and then um, this is without. But if you see this dough, this is what I was saying. When you let it sit and proof, this is what happens to your dough. Like it becomes really stretchy, really like yeasty. You can like still smell the yeast um, and it's like really beautiful texture. And this will be absolutely delicious with this, uh, and this corn dog. What happened to the matcha? You didn't put matcha in that one? Yeah, oh, okay. I just said that I didn't put them on. Okay, shoes. sorry. <laughs> I was disturbed yeah. by the laptop falling. It's okay. Um, yeah, for this one, I didn't add the matcha because I, I mean, honestly, like I said, it's really optional, the matcha powder. Um, you can add it, you don't have to add it, whatever you want to do. But the yeast, you definitely want to do. And the milk, so things that you can't miss in this is like the flour, the yeast, uh, the milk, salt, sugar. It's like five ingredients. That, you can't really mess with mess with that one because that's like the base of the recipe um but yeah if you want to like add stuff to it for more flavor that's fine which is why i did it with the matcha anyway 
Moving on. Um, so I have my frankfurters, and these are so great in this. Um, they're plant-based. The flavor is like super smoky, and I love the garlic onion flavor it adds to it. And there's like spices in it that works really well with this recipe. I just love it. I tested it a bunch of times, and my staff loves it. It's very good. Um, and what are you using okay. for the are they are they skewers? Oh, yeah, so you can use skewers, but I like to add. I use chopsticks because why not? You always get like and you and you always have it at home. I always have it. At home. <laughs> you always have like extra chopsticks, right? Like when you get Chinese takeout or whatever, they, you, I feel like everyone always has like an extra pair in their um, in their drawers. So I'm actually just gonna wash my hands a little bit more. But um, so that is that. So yeah. So basically, what you're doing is you're skewering your frankfurter on the chopstick and then obviously you can use regular skewers too but um i just think it's super fun with the chopsticks but that's what we're doing just just want to make sure that when you're skewering um you're being very careful that it's like centered because what can happen is your chopstick can go like that and then your dog is all all of a sudden curvy we don't want that <laughs> we don't want such a curvy dog <laughs> That was supposed to be funny. It's funny. Um, I, I got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Hope the rest of you got it too. But um, it smells so good. What does it smell it? like? She's going to smell it. Jen's going to smell it. By the way, mm. my sister Jen is my camera person. So please say hi, hi. hi to her. <laughs> She's the one making the commentary and reading your uh, questions out to me. Um... But it's really smoky though. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very smoky. It's very smoky. Um, and when you taste it too, it's actually, it has a nice like smoky charred flavor almost, which is so perfect for this recipe. Um, okay, so dough is ready. Dogs are skewered. Let's talk about the French fries. So you can use any fr frozen French fries you want. You can even use like fresh, uh, potato, but I recommend using frozen french fries because when these uh, when potatoes get frozen what happens is it, it forms a crust because it um, Yeah, it's just like this thing that they do. I always I always think that you have to freeze your um, Fries before even if they're hand cut fresh fries freeze them. Really? Why? Because it, what it does is it forms a skin and that's what makes it like super, super crispy for a long time. And really? Yeah, and that's the thing. Remember when, um, you know what? I'm not even gonna mention that because. What? Huh? What? I was gonna say because when fast food restaurants, some of them would go from like hand cut, uh -huh. they would start frozen and then they would switch their fries to like a hand cut fresh fry because people think automatically like fresh cut fries are, the, are better, uh -huh. but actually they get soggy really quick. And it's just sad, and then they end up switching back to like frozen French fries. Oh wow! And um, I've done that multiple times at Miss You too, because I thought like, oh, let's cut it fresh; it's better. But actually, no, it's not. It's soggy, and I don't like it at all. Interesting. And that's just my two cents. But I would recommend using frozen French fries. Plus, it's like easier. Who wants to like cut a potato and like slice it and like make, make French fries? No one wants to do that. <laughs> just buy it frozen. It's totally fine, and it tastes so good. And also. You can use any cut you want, but I am using my two favorites, which is something that you don't see in the Korean street dog mm -hmm. situation, uh, waffle fries. Ooh. And I think it's so fun doing the waffle fry one. And I love tater tots because who doesn't love tater tots? I freaking love tater tots. It's like my guilty pleasure. So I'm using tater tots and waffle fries. And the waffle fries, I'm gonna just like give it a, kind of like a cut, like the bigger pieces, I'm gonna cut it just because um, it'll, e it'll be easier when I'm battering um, the hot dog or the corn dog with it. Yeah, because the traditional fries that come with the corn dog in Korea is just like the plain like fries, right? right? Yeah. Um, they're usually like crinkle cut. Or, oh, right, the crinkle yeah, cut ones, crinkle right? Cut, yeah, which you can do. I mean, it's fine. It's totally fine using mm -hmm. that, but why not level it up? 
That's fun. Right? Mm -hmm. It's much more fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna check on my oil because what, what I'm gonna do is as soon as I cover it with the dough and cover it in the french fries, you, you, we're gonna wanna like fry it right away because it can be a little flimsy. So we just wanna test our oil, make sure it's hot. So the fries, it's not thawed out or anything, right? It's right out of the freezer? It is actually thawed out. Oh, it is you thawed out. You wanna make sure that it's thawed. Okay, so um, it has to be thawed out. I would, it's just easier because if they're frozen, it doesn't stick as well to the dough. Got it. Um, but when it's thawed, you can, it's, you know, you can kind of like cover it and it can shape okay. easier. So I would thaw it out. Okay. Which only takes like five minutes to do. But I wanted to come test our oil. I do not have a thermometer. So what I'm gonna do is um, throw a tiny piece in there. And as, if it's, if your oil's ready, it will start, the thing will float right away, which my oil looks ready. So, so let's do this guys. This is the fun part. I'm gonna just throw on gloves. So I like, I like cooking with gloves on actually. You should see me at my restaurants. My sister it kills me out because I can't help myself and I just like, I'm like she so uses obsessed. She uses at least 10 pairs in two minutes, I swear. It's not 10 pairs. I, I, I'm not over exaggerating. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I just like being sanitary, and um, gloves are the best thing ever. So, anyway, so here, here we are. So, this is what we're gonna do. Let me just move my knife. So, that's the dough you made before. Uh -huh. So, you look, so watch this. So, this is oh, why wow. this dough is super important because look how stretchy it is and this wow. is what the yeast does you know and this is what we want so you just kind of twirl it around in there yeah you twirl it around because we want we want it to be pretty relatively even you know you don't want like huge lumps like a big lump here big lump there so if you do it like that you can easily kind of even it out right and then from here we're just gonna cover it you just like start sticking it on like that. I mean, this looks hilarious, right? I love this so much. This is like wow, the best thing that's ever. that's so cool. Yep, and then we're just gonna bring this around here. Do you wanna come, up, mm -hmm. come around here? And just make sure that it's covered kind of like on all sides, like that, right? And then I like to always make sure that pretty much like everywhere is covered. You see? What about the hash browns? I'm gonna do the, what do you mean, the tater tots? Oh, tater tots. I'm gonna do the tater tots after this one. Oh, is it a but, separate one? Yeah, I'm just doing um, two separate ones. Got it. Okay, so that just goes straight in, right? So while that fries, I'm gonna do one more. Okay, okay. Come over here. So let me show you another one. And this time around, I'm gonna do our teeter tots. So here we go. You just push it in there and just mm -hmm. twirl it. Twirl it. And you can get it like nice and even like that. Right? right? How many corn knocks do you think you can make with this dough? Um, a lot. <laughs> like <laughs> five to six? Like feed a party. Um, I would say you can make like Seven? Eight. Wow. Eight, nine, ten. Let me see. See, this is going to double in size. So right, it's going to turn recipe, into this. Yeah. Yeah, I would say you can make a dozen. Actually, enough for like a full pack of the uh, of the field rows. Right? So this has six in it. Yeah, so def definitely if you buy two of these, with one of these dough recipes, mm -hmm. you can do that. All right, so before I put that in, I'm just going to use my tongs. Oh my gosh, look at it. Beautiful. So fun. I should have maybe used a larger pot. I didn't realize how small this pot is. That's fine. Just gonna move it over and then make sure the tater tots are in nice and well, stuck on there. And then this can fry. And what you, you know what you can do also, just like, if you're making this recipe and you just want to make all of it uh -huh. and then freeze it, you can totally do that. Ah. And then whenever you want to eat it, 
just like throw it in the oven, toaster oven, air fryer, yeah. whatever. And there, that way you have like corn dogs. That's cool. At all times. But doesn't that look awesome? Delicious. Oh my goodness. It looks so good. It's so cool how you use the waffle fries and the tater tots. Kind of cool. Is that your comment or someone's comment? No, it's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. They just care. Kidding. They care. I'm just kidding. So you can freeze after frying. You can freeze it after frying, for sure. Uh huh. Yum. Yeah, and that way it's all cooked. Yeah. At that point. Um, you just throw it in the, the oven. oven. Mm -hmm. And I love these frankfurters. Um, they're plant plant based, so it's made with like. Uh, wheat protein. It's made with like whole grains. It's made with like garlic, onions. It has a it has a ton of flavor, um, smokiness. It's really really good. Uh, what I like to do is I like to cut this into like small pieces mm -hmm. and make like fried rice. With mm. it. You could do that. You could do um, what else? You can throw it in like soups. I love doing that too because it gives it that extra protein and also the smokiness really works well with like a brothy dish. So I love doing that. Um, and it's vegan, you said? It is plant-based, yes, so no animal protein. Mm. Oh, I think I need a... Okay, so... Look at that. So this is gonna fry for at least like, I would say like five, six minutes, but you'll, you'll be able to tell when it's like ready, but the only thing that you're really cooking here is the dough, right? Because the french fries are technically cooked, you just want it to get crispy, which gets crispy relatively quickly. And then um, the frankfurters are already cooked as well. So it's not like you're really cooking that much stuff. You're just cooking the dough technically at this point. Mm -hmm. But um, that is the situation. Oh my God, look how pretty that looks. Yeah, it looks great. It looks so good. I just like up my temp a little bit just because I felt like this one wasn't kind of coming together yet. But that looks delicious. So good. Okay, and it's almost about ready. Well, at least my waffle fry one, but I think they can wait. Give it patience. You gotta be patient when you're mm -hmm. frying. Look at that. Close up. Oh my God, look at the tater tot one. Wow. Isn't that insane? Mm -hmm. I like that. Waffle fry looks good too, but. I don't know. Do you prefer tater tots or waffle fries? That is very, very hard. I know. Because, like, tater tots, you can't really find anywhere. Yeah, no, one, much. no one serves tater tots. But waffle fries, you can find anywhere. But tater tots, you can't. So it's kind of like... Yeah. That's why I feel like tater tots are really underrated. Because yeah. it's like, how come, you, how come no one serves tater yeah. tots? <laughs> Do you have any other, like, plant-based dishes you really like? Do I have any other plant-based dishes that I Well, like? actually well, you can use the um, frankfurters in like fried rice you said, right? Yeah, so I, I feel like any dish you can make plant-based mm -hmm. and I like doing that a mm -hmm. lot. You know, like I like making tacos with like no meat sometimes, you know? Sometimes you just like don't want that and you just want to eat something plant-based. And a lot of Korean food is plant-based as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. it's a little easier for us, right? Um, so that can go a little longer, but look at how <gasps> amazing this wow. looks, you guys. It's like freaking waffle fries on a corn dog, okay? So at this point, actually, while it's still really hot, we need to get out of the fryer. This is like the super Korean thing that... Um, I feel like Koreans love adding sugar like this, like literally granulated, granulated sugar. <laughs> they like adding it to a lot of the street food in Korea. So like there's this really popular dish called like um, the, the breakfast street toast, which is just like an egg sandwich kind of. It's like a Korean style egg sandwich. But what they love to do is put like a literally a spoonful of sugar on the egg. Hmm. I don't know why, but it tastes really good <laughs> and it works. <laughs> People love it. Yeah, I think it's like that sweet, savory combo, right. and that's what we're doing here. And this um, is a really important step um, that I watched all the street vendors do, is that they sprinkle sugar all over the dog out after it comes out of the fryer. 
and that will give it that sweetness. Remember, we didn't really use that much sugar in the dough base. There's no sugar in this whatsoever. So this will give it that sweetness that brings it to that, um, that level of like deliciousness. It's balance, right? So that, that's the sugar. And we're gonna be adding condiments later to this, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's where it's like you can kind of have fun with. Yeah. You can add whatever condiments you want. And all the saucy sauces you can create. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I didn't go super fancy with this one because I wanted the, um, the dog to be kind of like the main centerpiece. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, like for me, I'm, I'm kind of a purist when it comes to... You like the traditional way of I eating just it. Like, yeah. it. When it comes to a corn dog, I just like ketchup and mustard, you know? Wow, look at the tater top. I don't want to go crazy. The tater top one. Huh? You still love tan. No. Oh. It's just harder. But, okay, so um, sugar, yet again, on, on the hash brown dog. Doesn't that look cool? That looks amazing. I don't know. I don't know which one I like more. What about you guys? What do you guys like more? Do you prefer the hash brown or I keep on saying hash brown uh, the tater tots or the waffle fries no one has an opinion but that's okay all right I need to try it first before I have an opinion yeah all right so both look amazing both look amazing and at this point obviously we want to garnish with our condiment so I'm gonna go catch up this is just my condiments of choice. Ooh, someone said curly fries, but curly that sounds fries that, that sounds awesome. amazing. Yes, yes. Curly fries would be really good. So I'm gonna do ketchup mm -hmm. on both. Some ketchup, and then we'll go in. With A lot of people said tater tots. Really? Uh huh. See, most people said tater tots. I feel like everyone loves tater tots. Hey, everyone it's loves tater tots. Like yeah. item that no it's restaurant delicious. wants to sell. Yeah. I bet if I had tater tots on my menu, we would sell. Yes, for sure. Tonic, for sure. Right. So maybe you can make like kimchi tater tots or right, something. Right. That would be so good. There's a mustard. Right. That looks good. Hmm. Oh my god, my mouth is watering actually. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna add um, some hot sauce, but this is completely optional. But I just like a little bit of spicy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of hot sauce. And then this is my favorite item. I'm adding mayo. Oh yeah. Mayo, but obviously you can use like plant-based mayo or um, you don't have to add mayo at all. But I just feel like this is always nice to have a little bit of that creaminess. I mean, we're, we're eating like French fried corn dogs. Might as well just go all out. On that, right? <laughs> like we're not, we're not counting calories here. <laughs> we're, not, we're not talking about that. All right. So that, that is like my, wow. That's really pretty too. I mean, it's insane. So if you that. used the matcha dough, would have been like green on the inside? Not really. Not really. See, okay. You can, I mean, it's, you can slightly see it. I just Messed that up. Ooh, right? somebody said plant based truffle mayo. That sounds really good. I've never had that before. But it sounds really it. good. It yeah. It sounds really good. But can you imagine if you like served this at a barbecue or like your kids? Your mm. kids go insane. Mm -hmm. this. Insane. Mm -hmm. And um, look at that. It's just like, it's so good. So pretty. We're going to cut into it because. Um, I mean, should we just like. Should I, just I think eat you it? should just eat it. Take I, a bite. Okay. Like how you would in Korea. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> Dude, oh can you imagine eating this on the streets of oh. after like, um, after a night of drinking or like uh, maybe a night of shopping for like four hours? Like Delicious. This is like the perfect snack, the perfect treat. But anyway, I'm gonna, which one should I have? Should the tater tot one? one. The tater tot one? Yes, right. everyone is rooting for the tater tot one. All right, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> really hot, oh my God. Make sure you get the dog. Is it hot? Mm hmm. Mm. Can you see that inside? Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. The Frankfurter is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, the field rose. Actually, I like it better than a hot dog, I think. Mm. Because it's like. It and it's so plant based. Flavor. Yeah. There's so much flavor. It's super smoky. 
it really tastes like the spices, the onion and the garlic, but I really like that smoky. Yeah. It almost tastes like, like kind of charred. I wonder what makes it smoky. That looks what? so good. I didn't make the product, so I don't know, but it's so good. Look at the tater tots. Right? Wow. Mmm. Mm. You want to bite so bad, don't you? Uh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drooling. Mm, I gotta take one more bite. And that crunch you mm -hmm. hear? See? Wow. I'm gonna think about it, the waffle fries. Too. Yeah. Um, the waffle fries, it's a little tricky because it's like huge. But I'm just gonna... Um, Mm. Wow, that looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It's so fun. And I love the sweetness of that sprinkled sugar. Mm -hmm. And I actually like the texture of the sugar too. Cause you know, granulated sugar it could be people always like to melt it or like make sure that they don't feel the granular like crystals. But it actually works really good here because it adds to the texture. I just love it. It's so good. I gotta take a little bit. Mmm. <laughs> Damn. So it's like sweet and savory. Sweet and savory, smoky, a lot of spices, creamy from all the condiments. And so everything's plant based. Everything is plant based. Well, like I said, mayo is totally optional. Mm -hmm. And this is just my toppings of choice, but you can put anything you want on there. Like, you can even put relish in there on top. You can put like chunky, mm -hmm. chunky condiments on there too. <clears throat> like I was tempted to chop up some kimchi and put it on top. Mm. So that would be super good and make it more Korean. But I think um, it's fine as it is and it's just so good. And it's so fun. And it's so fun. It's super fun. I think like kids would love yeah. this. And there's, there's a reason why it's such a trending hypey dish, right? And um, I think like sometimes people put in like put the cheese and I know that Field Roast actually has like block cheese and you can add that too. Mm. So what you would do is you would um, skewer half of it with the cheese and mm -hmm. half of it with the um, with the frankfurter mm -hmm. and then do the same thing and then half of it will be like cheesy yeah so that's that's really fun and that's really trending um as well but that's pretty much it i mean i would say that this is a really simple recipe that's really fun to do um i would recommend definitely trying to make this because it's it's really fun right you would be able to make this i would hard. i'm not a chef by any case but i think i would be able to do this right. recipe right so if there's no more questions, do we have any questions or no? So without further ado, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you again, Field Rose, for the donation and the sponsorship, Chef's Feed for the, the team and for this opportunity. Thank you guys so much. The crew is awesome. Um, and also IRC, Independent Restaurant Coalition. Please, um, there's a link to donate if you want to help us out. But right now, I feel that every restaurant is really going through this, the same thing, that we're all struggling. Mm -hmm. It's uh, It's been really difficult, especially here in New York. Um, our sales are, like, drop. It, it's kind of crazy, but our, we're doing, like, 20%, if even that, of sales that we would normally be doing um, if it wasn't for COVID. And you can... Uh, I'm sure you can only imagine how that is for us. And um, yeah, so we want to be able to obviously uh, use the donation to good usage and um, and it's all, it's back to the grind, right? Yeah, but we're not giving up yet. You Don't know, give up. We're, we're restaurants for a reason. We're New fighters. York strong. Yeah, exactly. But thanks guys so much for joining me.